of equal importance to your task of successfully carrying out your missions in the theater of operations is the information to be gained from the journey out and back. To this end, fighter pilots and bombardment crews must be on the alert when not engaged with the enemy for information or intelligence. Gentlemen, you'll follow me on this map. Once you get into enemy territory, there's danger of interception all along this line. Especially over Moray, which is here, about 60 miles out. And Choba, here, about 110 miles from our base. The 86th Bombardment Group has the mission of flying direct to Yamora at 20,000 feet and bombing various objectives there. They will assemble over Chora at 5,000 feet at 0430 hour tomorrow morning. This group, with the 17th Fighter Group, has the mission of escorting and protecting the bombardment group for the first 200 miles. And on the return trip, it will execute certain reconnaissance missions. When you get to the fork of the Dungo River, here, you are at the end of your escort mission. Squadron commanders will then turn back with their squadrons in formation. Major White will explain the mission to you in detail. On the return trip, we are ordered to get all information possible concerning the results of our bombing last night of the railroad junction and oil dump at Keita. This city is ringed with anti-aircraft defenses. And from previous experience, we judge it to have an excellent anti-aircraft warning service. You can see from this map that the oil dump is one and a half miles southeast of the main railroad depot. It is adjacent to a railroad line so that Though you fail to locate the depot, you should be able to spot the oil dump. Also, if the mission of last night was at all successful, there should be fires still burning with heavy black smoke. Information is also requested by headquarters on developments in a wood five miles west of Matora. This photograph, taken five days ago, is an exact duplicate of all other photographs taken of the wood in the past. Since then, however, we have had reports of new roads leading into the wood. This suggests enemy activity we should know about. At the towns of Hyugi and Korea, here, near the Grom Canal, we have reports of activities of clearing woods and of building spur track. And it's requested that we reconnoiter these positions, giving particular attention to the possibility that new airdromes are being established there. Intelligence believes this activity may be guarded by anti-aircraft, so be cautious of your approach. As you leave, you'll pick up a map of the Atsui area, and also aerial photographs of Mori, Yamura, Furia, and Keita. I think that's all, sir. This group will take off at 0440 hour, climb to 30,000 feet. As I said, our protective mission is, of course, to prevent enemy aircraft from interfering with a bombing mission. Now, you will not leave formation to engage enemy aircraft unless attack by that aircraft seems probable. You will, in that event, act only on my signal. We have discussed the reconnaissance objectives. At the Dungo River, we will all turn back. Follow me as I turn we will gradually descend to a point five miles short of Keita. At that time, Lieutenant Duffel here, on my signal of a wing dip in his direction, will leave the formation to execute the Keita mission. The rest of us will slow down to 200 miles airspeed. And on my signal of a wing rock, flights A and B will separate from flights C and D and fly to the right of the Keita area while the other flights fly to the left, all converging on the original course about five miles west of Keita. Any questions? That's all, gentlemen. We take off in exactly 10 minutes.
the initial point, fighter escort and bombers meet at dawn and climb to their base altitude. Darkness imposes a considerable handicap on air reconnaissance. Also, observations from aircraft operating in formation have their maneuverability restricted. Here, the protective mission comes first, and the collecting of enemy information is incidental to the main mission. Requirements of keeping formation may seriously interfere with accurate visual reconnaissance. At the fork of the river Dungo, the escort mission is over. The 181st Squadron Operations Officer was designated at the group meeting as group commander for the The squadrons observe his prearranged signal and head back for their individual missions. The bombers continue on. The commander checks the attendance at this point so that he may report the complete success of the escort mission. The 181st Squadron has already started to lose altitude from 20,000 feet to the 10,000 feet it must attain, five miles short of Cata. The airplanes are gaining speed slightly as they descend toward their required altitude, and this maneuver also is affected by a prearranged signal. By plan made at the squadron meeting before takeoff, it was decided that the squadron, except for Lieutenant Duffel, would divide into two sections, one going to the right and the other to the left of Cata, and flying at 10,000 feet. The purpose of this maneuver is to draw enemy fire and attention away from Lieutenant Duffel, and at the same time, remain at such an altitude as to operate with maximum safety. Lieutenant Duffel, observing this signal, leaves the formation to perform his solo mission. He has been ordered to reconnoiter the effect of the bombing of the oil tanks and railroad junction at Cata, and to fly fast and low on an eccentric path to offer the least target opportunity for possible hostile fire. Although his vision is limited because of his great speed, Lieutenant Duffel can nevertheless get a half a dozen impressions from his rapid flight over the objective. He flies low and fast for two or three miles past his objective, so he'll not be exposed to accurate anti-aircraft fire. He then rejoins his squadron. On its flight from Keita to Korea, a distance of 30 miles, the squadron climbs to a safer altitude of 20,000 feet. The commander signals his squadron to divide and the squadron follows as he dives toward the objective in Korea. Intelligence suspects the woods on the northeast edge of the field in Korea of being an enemy airdrome in the making. Lieutenant Duffel has already made notes of his first mission at Keita. He now records everything he saw at Korea. He made a report of the time and altitude of each reconnaissance. Notes are taken of anything seen which was not apparent on the aerial photograph examined before the mission. Nothing is left to the memory. The 182nd Squadron has been given the mission of investigating Mitora for new developments.
To the experienced intelligence officer, any change in the theater of operations is always foreshadowed by changes in ground installations. The squadron has descended from 20,000 feet above the Dongo River to 15,000 feet as it approaches Matora in preparation for the mission. The squadron commander signals one pilot to accompany him. They dive to reconnoiter the Matora woods. One flies to the left of the woods and the other to the right. This plan enhances the opportunity for observation, presents an element of surprise and confusion to enemy ground troops, and results in less effective fire from automatic weapons. In this situation, the fighter airplane will depend upon speed and close to the ground flight as protection against enemy fire. It's for this reason that these two pilots fly two or three miles past the target before they start their ascent. They recognize the danger of anti-aircraft protection to camouflaged units they've been reconnoitering. Whereas two miles past these positions, it's less likely that there will be anti-aircraft guns. As he makes notes on the mission at Matora, this pilot looks at the map of the woods to aid his recollection of any changes he has seen. And now the fighter squadrons have completed both their escort and their intelligence missions. The enemy will attempt to limit our air reconnaissance and observation by all means at his disposal. Therefore, it becomes essential at times to use combat types of airplanes for this kind of work because of their great speed and defensive armament. Flying missions completed, the pilots must turn in reports to squadron headquarters as soon as possible. Well, gentlemen, we're all back. Was that machine gun fire at Korea at the southeast end of the field? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ellis, what did you men see in the edge of those woods? northeast of the field at Korea. Well, Captain, I didn't have a lot of time. I saw a shack on the west end of the woods. There were several trucks and tractors scattered along the edge of the woods. And at the northeast end of the wood, there's a road that doesn't show up on our aerial photograph. Mm -hmm. What else did you see, gentlemen? Can you add to this? I saw pretty much the same thing, Captain. And there really is a shack or building at the west end of the wood. It looks like yellow, unweathered lumber. Uh, I didn't see any building, but I did see a road which does not appear in the aerial photograph on the northeast side of the field. Anything else? Yes, sir. I saw both the unweathered wood building and the new road, and there were a lot of trucks in that wood, too. What about you officers who flew on the south end of the field? That's all I saw, Captain. Quite a few tents, but no other change. How about Lieutenant Duffel, are you ready? Yes, sir, Major, it's ready. Colonel Harrington, this is Major Lamb, 181st. Yes, sir. The gist of the report you desire is here in paragraph 8. I'll read from Lieutenant Duffel's report. At Keda, 0559 hour, I saw five or six enormous oil tanks burning and giving off very heavy smoke and saw some dark red flame at two of the tanks. At the railroad junction, a mile and a half southwest of the oil tanks, I saw a large group of laborers. I could not see what the damage was they were working on. Over Korea, 0610 hour, in the edge of wood northeast of field, I saw a new wood building at the northeast end, several tractors and trucks in the wood, and a road at the southwest end, which does not appear on our aerial photograph, which is annexed here too. Light 50 caliber anti-aircraft machine gun fire at western end of field at Korea. Yes, sir. I'll send a formal report immediately. 182nd reporting. Yes, sir. Armored force. At least some of it, heavy tank. We didn't see a thing which doesn't show up in the aerial photograph of this area. Three heavy tanks in the southeast edge of the wood. 
Looks to me like this trip has given G2 something to think about.